safe and sound on solid ground. Well, the cat's out the bag, and Mark Robinson is just as terrible of a person as we thought. Mark Robinson is a Trump disciple that is running for governor of North Carolina. And the street said this morning that news was about to drop. News so bad that the Trump campaign was begging this man to drop out. And news just dropped that about a decade ago, Mark Robinson made accounts on corn websites and was saying things in the comment section of corn videos that would have made Adolf Hitler proud. I'm taking one for the team because this video might get taken down. But he said, I'm not in the KKK. They don't let blacks join. If I was in the KKK, I would have called him Martin Lucifer Coon. Slavery's not bad. Some people need to be slaves. I wish they would bring it back. I would certainly buy a few. Y'all can pause, just pause to read. I'm not, I'm just pause to read. He admitted to being a peeping Tom. You can pause to read. And one of the main pillars of his platform is being wildly homophobic and transphobic. You, 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 can, pause, you can pause to read that too. And he's since come out and denied that these accounts were him, but the proof is in the pudding. He was using the same username and emails and to create all of these accounts. This is the man actively running for governor of North Carolina. Yes or no, you still do not have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. I'm not president right now. But if we come up with something, I would only change it if we come up with something that's better and less expensive. And there are concepts and options we, we have to do that. And you'll be hearing about it in the not too distant future. Vice right here, Peter Parker is scared of spiders. Let's take it up a notch. Peter Parker is terrified of spiders, doesn't want any of the Avengers to know that. So he tells them that he can actually communicate with spiders, but it's less of like, he talks and they talk. It's more of like, he kind of reads their mind essentially. And it's like an invasion of privacy and he doesn't want to invade the spider's privacy. So he has to like be a certain distance away from spiders at any given point so that he doesn't hear their thoughts. Almost nobody believes him initially, but since Peter's got like heightened senses and shit, whenever a spider does show up in the tower, he just like will casually leave the room and then everybody else finds the spider afterwards and they start to realize like, oh shit, maybe Peter actually can hear the spider's thoughts because he's fucking leaving every room that spiders are in. And I don't think it's a thing that he would try to like prolong the lie i think that he would truly explain it once and then never again and it's like if you weren't there for him explaining it that first time you're not going to hear it again you're just not ever going to see him in a room with a spider however there was one time that tony asked peter hey can you just tell this spider to leave instead of me killing it and peter was like okay if you heard a booming voice from the heavens tell you to vacate the premises would you feel like a little scared and manipulated right then and tony was like yeah, I guess. And Peter was like, okay, and then just walked away. But also I think that Peter is a giant wimp. And if you killed a spider, he would indeed be like, no, a friend. You murdered him for nothing while still being scared of them. Anyways, that's my headcanon. God won't save the people in Congo, Palestine or Sudan, but he will help you get that job. He will help you get your house. He will help you get your boyfriend. A lot of people who are living in the West and who are religious or who are living in the global south but very economically well off kind of see themselves as the kind of chosen people by god and what i mean by this is that god is actively intervening in their lives god is giving them challenges to overcome but then in the end he's also given them reward you know maybe they didn't get that promotion but they applied for a new job and they got that therefore it was god giving it to them this god is an active living god in their life who both hears and answers their prayers. Since you believe in a God that does intervene in the world, you have to ask what kind of God intervenes to help you further your capitalistic endeavours, but doesn't help screaming and crying children. Like, I think it's why religion will keep losing so many members in the West, because it's no longer acceptable here to just say, well, that's just what God wills. And this idea that people are suffering in this life to get rewarded in the next, I don't think you guys understand the scale of suffering and devastation that's going on in this world. This is nothing short of torture these people are getting put through. When I'm talking about God, I'm talking about the God the Abrahamic religions believe in. I think it's easy to believe that God loves you, but he's making you go through these trials and tribulations in heaven when, for example, you live in a conflict zone and you have no choice but to believe that the next life will be better than this one. 
And it's very easy to believe that God loves you and is intervening in your life when everything seems to be going well and you live in the most privileged parts of the world. Hollywood, you will not subliminally message me into finding these men attractive. If I saw famous actor walking down the street, <laughs> Glenn, and this is no hate, this is no hate to them, all power to them. Like you're someone's type, but it's not on my keyboard. We're using different software, mm -hmm. different right? Font. Okay, you know? so please stop. Stop trying to make it happen. <laughs> Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to the such extent that you bleach? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? You should ask yourself, who taught you to hate being what God gave you? strange that when you mention the 11th of September or the Holocaust in front of anyone around the world, they immediately respond, never again. But when you mention the Palestinian Nakba, when the Palestinians lost about 80% of their lands until now, since 1948, no one says never again. Instead, they say, this is something politically complicated. I can't talk about it, but I am with the Israelis' right to defend themselves because they are the the only democracy in the whole Middle East, in the horror, in the absurd show of the Middle East. Or they can say that you can't talk about this because you're anti-Semitic. What? No, I'm a Palestinian who was forcibly displaced uh, for 76 years and my home is still there in the 1948 occupied lands that you call israel and some people were born in the us in east europe in russia are living there because they are israelis yeah and israel is only 76 years old but palestine is thousands educate yourself people educate yourself i can't i can't just deal with those people who are who, who until now don't know anything about the Palestinian cause and about the 1948 Nakba. Educate yourself, people. I like her dominant, but I expect her to peg me though. You hear that? Oh shit. Woo, Kamala! Yes! Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Now, because of a certain vocal minority, Joe Biden has been forced out of the election and you were all stuck with me. 
Now, I'm thinking Josh Shapiro for VP. And I'm thinking it'll be a cold day in hell. You and your silk press need to choose somebody else. Don't question her. Do not question her. I see you and I hear you. Tim Walls, everyone. Ah! Such a great pick. She made the right choice. She made the right choice. Such a great pick. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. To the loud bunch in the bottom row advocating for human life, I'm speaking. I'm speaking. Hey, all I know is you better fix your tone when talking about protesters or you won't be winning shit on my watch. Ah! Screw you and the protesters. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck you're up. You're seen and you're heard. Cease fire now for at least six weeks. Oh, oh, excuse me, everyone. It seems like we have a few words from Joe. Those protesters out in the street, they have a point. They do, don't they? Oh, the First Amendment is so important, so wise, so insightful. Woo! Mama La! I'll vote for you no matter what! No matter what? Oh, well, in that case, Screw those protesters. I know that's right. Woo! Show up off with the Queen's Lay! Yes! Woo! You're a weird bitch, you know that? Yes, of course. I remember how can I forget how you feel. I hope this reaches the audience that I needed to reach. Gay black TikTok. <laughs> I'm tired of watching Moonlight. I'm tired of asking Google for black gay movie recommendations. Can y'all recommend me a queer movie? Black Love, Mask or Femme, No DLs. Queer Movie, Black Love, Mask or Femme, No DLs. Thank you. We should all be extremely scared at the sheer speed at which xenophobic anti-Black screed about Haitians got elevated to the level of, oh, we're now in national pogrom watch. New York Post ran an entire story about a Haitian migrant that got into a minor car accident. Mind you, this is one of the literally thousands of car accidents that happen in this country. None of the parties were injured, but a fender bender is being used now to drum up support for mass deportations. My thing is, we know that when this violence happens and we know it's going to happen, these people are not going to be able to rely on the police or the state for safety. So my simple question is, in your community, who's organizing mutual self-defense? And are you a part of those efforts? This is not going to stop. Half of our political system has completely embraced violent xenophobia and the other half doesn't have a problem with it. And so it's up to the people to protect ourselves. But my head is holding up my heart, my heart. And I see no other signs. What if they're all lies? Will it even matter what you say? Can you make these feelings go away?
let's talk about fractal math and the complexity of African architecture and urban design. So when Europeans first came to Africa, they didn't understand the layout of the towns and villages. They thus thought that the urban design was primitive and very disorganized. It turns out that Africans were using a form of geometry that Europeans hadn't discovered until that point. Namely, they were using fractal geometry. Africans had been using this form of geometry for hundreds of years. Europeans didn't even know that fractals really existed until 1872. If you don't know what fractals are, fractals are beautiful geometric patterns. They can be very complicated, but at a basic level, a fractal is any shape that looks the same in smaller sections as it does in the largest section as a whole. For example, in this fern leaf, the entire branch looks a lot like one leaf looks a lot like one section of a leaf. The same thing can be said for the village of Baila, where one house looks exactly like one family compound looks exactly like the village as a whole. Most African towns and villages have adopted a more Eurocentric grid-like pattern of urban design after colonialism, but now the West is now trying to turn back to fractal design because it's been proving that looking at fractals reduces stress and leads to better well-being in humans. And it's also been shown that the grid-like urban design of most Western societies actually increases stress for the average human. If you don't know me, I'm Lumiara Meiji. I'm a writer and storyteller. My debut novel, The Waning, is an Afrocentric dystopian where five divinely possessed women take down their oppressive ruling regime. If you like African you like anti-colonialism, you should check out the book wherever you get your books. Before I make this video, I know that half of y'all that are coming to my page are looking for drama. I want you to boost this video just as much as you boosted them other ones. The police department in Henderson, North Carolina is trying to cover up a lynching. Javian McGee, 21 years old, from Chicago, Illinois, is a truck driver who was en route and working in North Carolina. Henderson, North Carolina, was found hanging from a tree. He did not put himself there. And they are trying to make us believe that he did. These people are trying to say that that boy just randomly went to Walmart while he was working, got a rope, and decided just to hang himself. I don't know about y'all, but that sounds like some pure D bullshit. The coroner did not even want this boy's family to see his body. Black people have actively been hunted in this country since we've arrived here. They kept making excuses like, oh, well, you can't view the body because of COVID. Mm -mm. No news outlets are covering this story. No media outlets are covering this story. So we, the people, need to cover this story and bring as much attention to it as we possibly can. So I'm tagging his cousin below that came on here and told us about his story. Please watch her video. Please boost that video. Comment, like, share, repost. Lynching did not stop in the 1980s. Lynching is actively still going on to this day. So a man was recently executed by the NYPD over not paying his $2.90 bus fare. They were so bloodthirsty, they even found a way to hit three other innocent bystanders. One woman in the head, two people are in critical condition, and even found a way to shoot another cop. Say they fear for their lives. He pulled a knife. The all eyewitnesses say he had his hands behind his back. Now, all I'm seeing on the internet is criticism, criticism, criticism. A whole bunch of people calling them bad cops. No, those are good cops. Great cops, even. The Supreme Court has already ruled the police have no obligation to protect human life. Their job is to protect property. Like, if you don't start executing people for skipping out on their bus fare, what if a hundred other people do it? A thousand other people do it. Now you're out on nearly $3,000. My goodness, what will that do to shareholder value? That's the thing a lot of y'all don't understand. Human lives are nothing but rounding errors for corporate profits. We're out here mourning the unjust treatment and slaughter of black and brown people instead of focusing on the real victims. Why is nobody checking in on the shareholders? I know there is no better example of like black faces in high places won't save us than the mayor of New York. Quite literally, a former black man turned police officer turned mayor, right? Literally got up on a press conference and said, well, he was a career criminal. Did not criticize the police one time. They so remorseless, the victim's mother didn't get so much as a knock on the door. They left the post-it note. She found out through the news I'm not really a big fan of people getting on the internet to be like, well, we've tried everything. I don't know what's left. Violence. Have, have we tried violence? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, I can't say that on there. Ask me how I'm doing. I'm blessed. Yes. Living every moment. No regrets. Smile up on my face. Second guess intuition Come over, I'll rethink my position Mean that more ways than one if you're listening Don't let your ego get ammunition, no It's just physical Reminiscing on history that 
shit should go It's too embarrassing Dreaming marriage in Paris Our fingers got 60 carats combined Then I'm lifting you bridal style Leave our parents behind Hitting me at 315 Yeah, that's the rightest of times We just can't be friends of me So that's the wildest pipeline Where we act in these some Saudis Swear this can't be it, man Cut the shit, gotta admit that you know me been almost a year since October 7th, a year without peace, without safety. I remember my father telling us just take your important documents and nothing else because we will be back in two days. But to try to imagine those two days have turned into almost a year, a year without feeling safe, a year without peace, a year without the simple things we all take for granted. This is the reality we've been living. And still we hold on to hope that one day peace will find its way back to us. Remember, even in the toughest of times, our spirit remains unbroken. Please don't stop amplifying our voices because we are tired of living this life. And don't forget to use this filter designed by my brother Ayman. Thank you very much for your support. Feminine as constructed by Western society doesn't really encapsulate blackness. So when black women are overtly feminine as like typically constructed, it's kind of like for black women specifically because they've been so masculinized by society, by white society and black men, that to be to be feminine or soft is like to, to resist that and to push back. So I think it does mean something different. I think it takes more effort to be to to be allowed to be feminine as a black woman. So I think it is constructed a little bit differently. I just found out that Caesar salad is actually Mexican and not Italian. So I Googled other foods with surprising origins and I'm gonna be sharing them with you today. Did you know that chicken tikka masala is from Scotland? Like the guy is Scottish, but his family is from Bangladesh and he invented it because there was an annoying customer that didn't like chicken tikka. So he added tomato to it and the customer liked it. And that's how he got chicken tikka masala. Also, nobody tell the Italians, but pasta is Chinese and also nobody tell the Spanish but churros are also Chinese and I don't know who needs to hear this but ice cream is from Mongolia and hot dogs are from Germany from Frankfurt City so that makes sense in a lot of ways and hold on let me look up a couple more oh yeah Swedish meatballs are actually Turkish they were brought to Sweden in the 18th century by King Charles the 12th as confirmed by the official Twitter account of Sweden and scotch eggs aren't from Scotland they are from India in a plot twist that nobody could have possibly seen coming especially not me because what do you mean everything I know is a lie a lot of folks don't know that Chicago is the wrongful conviction capital of the United States and the uh, torture capital of the United States you know and most of the people being tortured and wrongfully convicted are black and brown folks in Chicago and these cops who are doing the torturing and conviction they're being trained in Israel you know the all the major cities in the United States send thousands of officers over to Israel to be trained you know by Israeli police in these brutal tactics that they fine tune on Palestinians you know what I mean and so they come back here and use them on black people in the United States it's very real you know very 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 immediate consequences that black people here in the United States suffer because of the tactics that Israel uses on Palestinians. So black liberation is Palestinian liberation. And that's why, you know, when you see like the comments and all that shit we made in City Hall, this shit is real for us. Peace and love. black man was lynched in Henderson, North Carolina. Myself and my family is from North Carolina. That's where I grew up. From K-12, through I drove by a Confederate statue in order to get to school. And it's not too hard to find way too many Confederate flags in any part of North Carolina. And by no stretch of the imagination, Henderson is a sundown town. Javion McGee did not die at his own hand. And Sheriff Curtis knows that. Well, Curtis, you can say all day that a black man found with a rope around his neck attached to a tree is not a lynching. And I welcome you to keep telling yourself that. But unfortunately for a lot of us, that's the stupidest thing we've ever heard. But I also want to remind you that you're very familiar with Henderson, North Carolina, because I'm sure you remember the black school resource officer that slammed this child twice in 2019. Curtis was the sheriff at the time leading this investigation. Curtis had no problem with that video being released to the public, but now Curtis doesn't even want Javion's family to see his body. Why not work with the family, Curtis? How did a young man from Illinois wind up dead in the middle of nowhere? Nigga, am I hot or scrambled eggs fried chicken? Everybody eight, 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 eight.
It is? Oh yeah, it's a uh, quarter to. Think about that sentence for a second, okay? Now I'm gonna ask you one more fucking time. What fucking time is it? Um, qu quarter to. Holy piss! You. What time is it? Oh, it's uh. Half past. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Pink. I know. Mine too. Is it? Okay, great. Was your life traumatic? There's a bug. If you spray bugs with Windex, that knocks them out. Ammonia. Ammonia is low-key a really good drag name. Hi, I'm Ananaya. This is Gaydar. Today we're going to find out if you're straight, gay, or a homophobe. What is your name and what are your pronouns? I'm Gio. My pronouns are bag chaser. <gasps> I'm kind of in love with you already. Where the hell is that? Where the hell? Name a queer character that isn't a villain, an assistant, or a best friend. The Sun in Sex Education. Wait, that was a good one. Yeah. Proud of you for that. Do you watch anime at all? Yes. Do you have an anime answer? I was gonna say Naruto too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what politician wants to make gender affirming care on minors a felony? The Santos? So close, and he probably does. The person who wants to make gender affirming care a felony is JD Vance. Name one Renee rap song. Pass. <laughs> Name one Flo Millie song. Beef Remix. <laughs> Same. All I want is some okay. Your friend just went through their first lesbian breakup. What advice would you give them? Go thrifting? Retail therapy. That's all Re you got. Uh, okay, uh... T I'm kind of upset that you kind of got it on the nose. I'm tapped in. I think you are straight, and that's okay with me, because I love straight people. A couple of years ago, I made a formal apology to pumpkin spice people because I realized that I am one of you. So, tis sweet treat season. This is your reminder that you can obtain pumpkin spice sweet treats from local coffee shops, other national chains. You can make them at home. You do not have to go to that green lady who does not care about people's lives or workers' rights. Because I've noticed some people are losing the plot and I just want us all to get back on the same page. Also, while we're here, you don't need the new iPhone. I know you want it, but you don't need it. If you do need a new phone, then the refurbished ones will work just as well and save you a chunk of change. But I'm gonna get back to this pumpkin spice matcha that is surprisingly very good. So cheers, I love you, I believe in you, great talk. If you see something that doesn't look right, speak to staff or text police 61016. We'll sort it. He is a liar, as you say? Well, absolutely. He Why did you work for him? Savannah, slow down. Why do white people hate Haiti so much? It is because the existence of Haiti makes a core tenet of the white supremacist understanding of the world defunct and makes their ideology nonsensical. Number one, white supremacy depends on an understanding of the world that says that black people are either too weak or too servile to fight for their own freedom and achieve it. I don't know if you've ever had the displeasure of interacting with a British person. 
<laughs> especially a British person who still takes pride in the British Empire because you should see the absolute peacocking they do when they tell you um actually the British Empire abolished slavery yeah to hear them tell it you think the entire debate about slavery happened while black people were just kind of passively sitting around the white supremacist version of history affords absolutely no agency to people of color. Haiti is the first country that 100% unflinchingly defies this narrative and refuses to be written into a way that fits the white supremacist narrative. And Western quote unquote civilization has never forgiven Haiti for this. Pussy. Nobody wants you cause you got a broken pussy, broken pussy. Broken pussy. I'm so sick of my excuses. I just keep letting you down. Tell me why you keep me around. I thought I started some movement. My nerves just been getting the better of it. Disappointment makes the greatest sound. Hibachi, hibachi, the steak with the shrimp and the rice and the broccoli. This is a copycat recipe, so you can feel free to copy. I start with the rice. It must be left over or it won't cook properly. One scrambled egg, a little soy sauce. Don't make it too watery. Scalgin and chicken bouillon. I also throw in garlic butter. Clean as I go. I do not like cooking in kitchens with cutter. I sear up the steak. I pour on the sauce and watch how it bubble. They cook the shrimp, but not in the sauce. There's more garlic butter, boy. Hibachi, hibachi, this how you make yum yum sauce and not botch it. Some mayo, some ketchup and vinegar, plus a little honey to top it. <laughs> garlic powder in the... Rap, 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 the chef made it. This, um, this song's about giving somebody head, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's nothing else I can think of that tastes like strawberries on a summer Well, then what's that part about this sound? It's just like a song. Oh! Yep, yep, you're catching on. Because when you're... Yep, yep, you're on the right track. And then you're... Exactly, yes, no more okay. details necessary. Well, good for you, Harry. You know, reciprocation is important. And not enough people are doing not it. Not a lot of people do it. I was just gonna, not a lot of people do it. Yeah. 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 Well, guess it's time to re-download Hinge. Why are you talking to me like I'm, like, new to the music industry? I'm not. You are. My. It's just to me discrimination and uh, xenophobia and, and bigotry and racism. How scared are Haitian immigrants in Springfield after hearing former President Trump's claims? They, they are scared for their lives. Uh, some of them are asking me, uh, even yesterday I got a friend calling me asking me if he has to leave because he, he's scared for, for his life. Um, so another friend told me that um, it seems that uh, he, would have have, he would have had some family coming to visit him, but it seems that he, he gonna welcome them in, in Columbus or Dayton because he is not, it is not safe right now for him in Springfield to, to welcome his family here. What do you make of these claims? What does it feel like to hear politicians make these false accusations? It's, it's a very shocking and sad at the same time, especially coming from people seeking the high office of our land, high ranking people. I think they should do better. They have everything at their disposal to check the veracity of anything that they hear. They say that they are high educated people who attended great university, I mean, they know how to check something to see the veracity of it. And Never let anyone steal the joy you've worked so hard to have. Next time someone becomes the villain in your story, slap them so hard you dermaplane play in the side of their face. I'm saying forgiveness is out and total and perfect hatred is in. That's on community and that's on sisterhood.